Hello everyone, my name is Kathleen Turner and I'm a dietitian here in the Cardiac Rehab Program and welcome back to Nutrition and Heart Failure. So today or in today's video or this session, we're gonna talk about meal planning. We're also gonna talk a little bit about what to do if your appetite isn't very good because oftentimes when people have heart failure, that can sometimes be a struggle. So we talked a bit about this in our last video and really this idea of cooking at home more often is important, particularly for you folks who have heart failure, because we know that the vast majority of sodium that you eat comes from prepared and processed foods. So if you're able to cook at home, you're going to have way more control over how much salt or sodium it is that you're eating. But it's important to remember that meals do not have to be complicated. So if you either don't like to cook or if your energy for cooking isn't very good, your meals don't have to be complicated. It can be as simple as something like, you know, toast and peanut butter and a banana. If you think to yourself at mealtimes, you always want to try and have some kind of a grain some kind of a protein food and some kind of a vegetable or fruit. It can be a really great tick box in your head for yourself. So those meals can be really straightforward. It could also be, you know, toast and eggs and sliced tomatoes and cucumbers. It could be baked chicken and brown rice or maybe a baked potato and frozen vegetables. So your meals don't have to be complicated, but the more you can prepare them at home, the better off you're going to be because you're going to know exactly what's in them. So one of the things that can be really helpful around this is doing some meal planning. And this can be especially helpful for you folks who have heart failure, because sometimes what can happen when you have heart failure is that your energy isn't very good, or you might find that you get short of breath more quickly. So doing food preparation can feel like a lot of work. So if you do all the planning in advance, it makes it that much easier to actually plan, cook the meals when it comes time. So a few things to keep in mind when it comes to meal planning. One is that you want to have a list of all your recipes somewhere so that you know some of the things that you might cook often. So if you're someone who likes cookbooks, maybe you can flag them with a sticky or you can photocopy them and put them in a binder. If you're somebody who's more of an online or uh, internet recipe cook, you can also bookmark them or you can put them in a, uh, an app that collects your recipes. So there's different ways of doing that. But having easy access to those recipes that you make all the time can be really helpful. So doing that, also having a well-stocked pantry. So all the things that you normally keep in your pantry, having those easily available, and maybe you have some fast, easy pantry meals that you make. So maybe you like to have tuna on hand because you make a tuna melt with some, you know, tomatoes. Having those kind of things available and in your kitchen can be helpful. Once you've got your recipe somewhere or you've got your list of easy pantry meals somewhere, then you want to think about actually planning out your meal important to note that when we talk about meal planning, that can look different for different people. So for some of you, what you might do is plan a whole week at once. So you might sit down on Sunday mornings and plan the whole week, Sunday to Sunday, this is what I'm eating every day. Others might plan two days ahead of time. So on Sunday, I'm going to look after Monday and Tuesday, and then I'm going to think about Wednesday and Thursday. And for some of you, planning meals might also mean that you get up in the morning, you have breakfast, and then you think about, okay, what's happening with my day and what am I going to have for supper tonight? There's no right way to plan your meals, but you want to think about having some of those meals planned because it can make things easier when it comes time to prepare them. And the other thing that's important, particularly for you folks with heart failure, is recognizing that sometimes you might have parts of your day where your energy is good and some parts of the day where your energy is bad. So capitalize on those moments when your energy is good. So if your energy is good in the morning, do all your food prep in the morning so that all you have to do is put it in the oven at nighttime. But meal planning allows you to do some of those things. So thinking about that, how are you going to plan meals? Are you going to plan for the whole week or just for two days? The other thing that can be helpful is put that meal plan somewhere you can see it. So put it on your fridge or if you want to get fancy, get a chalkboard and write it on the chalkboard. But, you know, having those meal plans easily accessible and somewhere that you can see them every day can be really helpful. So, of course, the ideal is that you cook at home, you prepare your meals, you meal plan. But I recognize or we recognize that life doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you're probably going to eat prepared foods. 
And that might be because you've had a busy day. It might be that you, your energy level is low or your appetite is poor and you don't think you can prepare meals. So you wanna have a way of choosing those prepared meals. And this is where reading food labels can come in really handy. So for those of you who watched the first video, this will be Gold Hat. If you haven't seen the first video, you might wanna go back and check that out because we do have information about food label reading. But it's a little bit different on prepared food. So if you are buying a prepared entree, like a frozen dinner or um, you know, a frozen lasagna or something like that, that's gonna be your whole meal. So generally you want it to be less than 30% daily value for sodium. So if you remember when we talked about generally reading food labels, you're looking for less than 10%. If it's going to be your whole meal, your target is less than 30%. So we know that cooking at home is always the best option, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. That's not the way life works. So if you know you're gonna be having some prepared foods, then you wanna look for your lowest sodium options when it comes to prepared foods. If you find your energy isn't very good, or you know that your appetite isn't very good, or you're not going to be preparing meals, you might wanna think about having some of those prepared meals in your freezer or looking at a meal delivery option if that's something that is gonna help with you in your life, particularly if you're not cooking or you're not um, feeling like eating or having the energy to cook. So eating out can be tricky too. So we know that restaurant foods are very high in sodium. Sometimes a meal that you eat at the restaurant might have your whole day's amount of sodium in it and maybe even more than that. So there's a couple of tips here. So one is if you're eating at a chain restaurant, you can check out their website before you go. So visit their website, look at how much sodium is in things and pick your lowest sodium option. If it's not a chain, if it's maybe a local restaurant you eat at all the time, can you chat with the chef there and can they accommodate for you? Not always possible, but if it is, that's always a good thing. So that's a couple of things to think about. Other tips, you know, share your meal with somebody. So if you share with the person you're at the restaurant with or take half home, then you're only getting half the sodium. Also asking for things like sauces and dressings on the side, avoiding things that are breaded. Those are sort of sneaky ways that the sodium can creep up. So those are a couple of tips to keep in mind when you're eating out. I wanna just shift gears into talking a little bit about what to do if your appetite is poor. This is very common in people who have heart failure. They often tell me that their, their appetite isn't very good. Sometimes you might find that you're short of breath, which makes it harder to eat. So some tips to try and help if your appetite is poor. One is to have smaller meals more often or having you know, regular meals and perhaps larger snacks in between. Sometimes eating less at one time can make it feel a little bit less overwhelming and then you wanna eat more often. You also wanna think about focusing your attention at your meals on your carbohydrates and your protein first because that's where you're gonna get the calories and the protein. So eating those foods first. You might also wanna think about um, you know, avoid things that are low fat because you want to maximize your intake here. You want to eat as much as you can. Having things like nuts and seeds, put little bowls of them all around your house so that every time you walk by, you can grab a few. You might also need to look at taking a nutrition supplement. So something like Ensure or Boost or the store brand, wherever you might grocery shop if it's cheaper. So having those kind of things um, in your back pocket can be helpful too or you might wanna make a homemade milkshake. So there's lots of different options for trying to help to increase your intake if you find that your appetite is poor. You also wanna have a few easy meal ideas on hand. So this is especially important if your appetite's not very good or your energy levels are poor. So if it's, it might be something like toast on an eggs or toast and peanut butter, or it might be having some soups or stews available in your freezer that you can just reach for and heat up if your energy isn't very good. It could also be something like, um, you know, you might have soup that you add an egg to and stir it up so that you can add some protein that way. It might be beans on toast. There's lots of different easy meal ideas that you can have 
But one thing that can be helpful is to keep a list of those somewhere. So for those days where your appetite is poor, or your energy is poor, you don't have to think about what to eat. You can go to that list of things that work well for you and that are easy. Also having some easy snacks available. So, you know, perhaps you might have a list of snack ideas. And if you're looking for more information, we do have lots of snack ideas on our website, ottawaheart.ca, but it could be yogurt and fruit. It could be crackers and cheese. It could be crackers and peanut butter. It might be nuts and seeds with a few dried fruit. So having some of those snacks on hand is really helpful. And again, keeping a list of those easy meal or easy snack ideas somewhere that's easy to reach and easy to grab for and having those pantry foods available for those days where you might need them. It can also be helpful to eat often. So if your appetite isn't very good, eating smaller meals more frequently can be much more manageable. You might even need to set an alarm. So you might have to remind yourself to eat if your appetite isn't very good. You wanna think of eating as important as taking your medications. So I, I know that you had it drilled into you and you're all really great at taking your meds. You want to think about food as being as important. We really want you to make, sure, to make sure that you're getting enough to eat and that you're staying well nourished. If you notice that your appetite's really poor and you start to lose weight without trying, you really want to contact your doctor. So if you notice any of those things, call your cardiologist and let them know this is happening, that your weight is decreasing, that your appetite isn't very good, and they will refer you to the dietitian at the Heart Institute. So watch out for that. If you really are struggling with poor appetite or you know, weight loss, you wanna make sure you speak with your doctor. And so that brings us to the end of our slideshow. So the big takeaways today are that you want to think about meal planning and cooking at home, but recognizing that if you're not able to, there are certainly other options and you want to make sure that you're eating well and staying well nourished. It was a real pleasure to spend this 10 minutes with you today virtually. I encourage you to check out our website, ottawaheart.ca, if you have any questions. And I hope you all have a wonderful day.